Three, two, one. The Battle of Edmonton. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, what is up, teabaggers? We are sold the bag. I am with my your. What is up, teabaggers? I am. Teabaggers? What the hell? You just noticed that now? Yo. <laughs> I've been saying that all night. Yo, I just realized. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yo, I really did not hear you say that the whole time. Like, I, 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 I just, oh All right. Welcome back, to you baggers. We are sold the bag. I'm here with my boy, Dion. Yo, it's good. And we're here to react to uh, the channel WrestleMania, and the video is called 10 Sadly Forgotten Last Matches of WWE Legends. Are you a wrestling fan, Dion, from back in the day? Yes. Yes, yeah, not not now, not not, not now. now. I used but to back be. then. Yeah, so this is like back, way back in the day, like nineties, early two thousands, I'm guessing. But yeah, but anyway, let's see what the last matches of the, our legends had that are kind of sad. Let's go. Pro wrestler has to hang up their wrestling boots for the final time. The last match of a wrestler's career is perhaps the most important match they will ever have, as it represents their legacy and what they've yeah. given to the world of pro wrestling. There have been some famous last matches, including The Undertaker who competed in his last match against AJ Styles at WrestleMania 36, and Stone Cold Steve Austin who officially retired in 2003 against his arch nemesis The Rock. The Rock. However, there are also times that a wrestler's final match slips under the radar and fans often forget about a specific wrestler's retirement. Retirement match. Which are they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 forgotten last matches of WWE legends. I like this channel. He does some good, good really good videos. Okay. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily oh, yeah. wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number 10, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Oh. Rowdy Roddy Piper's retirement match should have been presented as a huge deal. But sadly, it wasn't. In relation to Piper's final match in WWE, this actually came in 2011 with a forgotten victory over The Miz on Raw. Oh, I completely forgot about that. It would come in 2011 <laughs> when Piper would team with Bob Orton Jr. to take on the legendary duo of Mick Foley and Terry Funk. With Bob star Orton power Jr.? In this match, there should have been a lot of fanfare surrounding the match. In However, 2007? However, place at a JCW independent show, Number 9, Big Boss Man are Considered by wrestling fans as well as fellow wrestlers to be one of the biggest big men of all time, the Big Boss Man was an excellent pro wrestler that left a lasting impression on the industry. The Big Boss Man's final WWE oh, match took place back really? in 2002 on Sunday Night Heat? Him lose to Tommy Dreamer on Heat. Oh, what the a final time to the former hardcore oh, champion who stepped back there. into the ring would be two years wrong with Tommy later Dreamer. when he would lose to the WWE World last match on to Sunday Night Heat? Duggan That's in a match good. in Japan. The big boss man unfortunately passed away just oh, a few wow. months after his final match, but his legacy was cemented forever when he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2016. Number 8, The Ultimate Warrior. Oh, Orlando Jordan? Final WWE match. So we talking about Orlando Jordan? Via DQ on Raw in 1996, and it's common knowledge that the Warrior would later embark on an infamous run in WCW. The run was a complete failure and the main aim of Warrior coming into the promotion yeah. was to finally put over Hulk Hogan. It's a misconception that Warrior's infamous match with Hogan at 1998's Halloween Havoc pay-per-view was his final match, but believe it or not, Warrior decided to come out of retirement a decade later for yeah. one final match. Against he Orlando Jordan. NWE promotion in Spain and his opponent for his last ever in-ring encounter would be Orlando Jordan. Yeah, that's right. Former US champion Orlando Jordan would get the honor of wrestling Warrior in his final match. Naturally, Warrior won the match, which happened to be for the promotion's world title, and afterwards, Warrior cut a promo which would put an end to his wrestling career. In the promo, Warrior would state, First of all, I want to thank the NWE for its hospitality, friendliness, professionalism, and for bringing me over here to Spain to wrestle in this return match after 10 years of being absent from the ring. I created and performed an incredible persona, the ultimate warrior. I talked about during this return how when I became this character, there's a transformation that takes place. That's indeed true. 
But behind the face paint, there are certain personality characteristics of the Ultimate Warrior that are still mine in my everyday life. When I leave this evening, the belt will stay. It will be your choice. Thanks again. I love the Ultimate Warrior fans from all over the world. I appreciate it. Number 7 Macho Man Randy Savage Macho Man Randy Savage deserved a send-off match that was fitting for the legend he was, but instead Savage retired in a forgotten about six-man tag match in TNA well, back in 2004. The match in question saw... Technically, he didn't wrestle in this one. He came out at the last two minutes of the match and just pinned the guy. Okay. So I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's his last match. I'm just saying he just came at the end after 15 minutes <laughs> and oh, came wow. in. And, yeah. So I don't know why they're putting it on here. He technically didn't do anything. Jeff Hardy. Savage teamed with Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles to take on Jeff Jarrett, Scott Hall, and Kevin Nash. The issue with the match was that Savage didn't join the match until 16 <coughs> minutes into it, yeah. and he would only wrestle for the final sequence. Savage would pin Jarrett after he recounted a sunset flip attempt with a punch. It was really underwhelming, and it was clear that Savage wasn't in any position to be in the ring. Original booking plans actually called for Savage to wrestle again at the next TNA pay-per-view, and this was going to see Savage Wait, that's the win the that was World Man. title, but Bone this didn't saw. happen as he decided to quit TNA and leave the world of pro wrestling behind. He was Bone saw McGraw. Number 6, oh. Booker T. The six-time world champion Booker T's last WWE match came in 2012 when he teamed up with Drew McIntyre to take on the duo of Christian and Mark Henry at a house show. However, his final match in the world of pro wrestling actually happened in 2020 when Booker competed in his own reality of wrestling promotion in Texas. The match would see Booker bring back his <laughs> GI bro. persona in an eight-man tag I match. I missed that gimmick. Booker's team ended up losing the match and the match was designed to build towards a big storyline in the promotion and Booker's team losing would act as a catalyst for the story arc. The match is available to watch for free on YouTube and it's easy to see why Booker is often asked about coming out of retirement as he looked incredible in his final match. He still looks Number Jack five, Kurt Hennig. Kurt Hennig was one of the most gifted in-ring talents to ever step foot in the squared circle and someone of his legendary status of Hennig deserved a better final match than what he received. Hennig's final match in WWE saw him lose oh, to Matt oh. Hardy on Heat in 2010. But for Hennig's final match in pro wrestling, he would wrestle in TNA against David Flair in an axe handle on a pole match. Oh, shit. The that match, was the match really wasn't well received. In fact, it was often cited as being the worst match of Hennig's entire career. The match well, was just a month Flair. before Hennig's untimely passing at the age of 44. Nobody can have a good match The British player. Bulldog. The legendary superstar of the British Bulldog's last match on WWE television would actually be against fellow legend Eddie Guerrero. Oh, and this clash would take place on heat and it resulted in a double DQ finish. Bulldog would wrestle one final time in WWE and this would see him secure a victory over Steve Blackman on a house show event and footage of this match has never been made public. Following his WWE departure, the Bulldog would only wrestle a total of two more matches. The final of these came in 2002 when Bulldog competed in a six-man tag match for the Top Rope Championship Wrestling promotion. Bulldog teamed with his son Harry Smith in this six-man tag match, which was no doubt a memorable experience for both Bulldog and Smith. Number 3. China Now the ninth wonder of the world, China is without a doubt one of the most important female stars in pro wrestling history. Although her final days in her time in the WWE were filled with political and personal turmoil, yeah. her final run in WWE saw China embark on a run as women's champion for the first time in her career. China's final match in WWE would be a match against Alita at 2001's Judgment Day pay-per-view, and this was an appropriate way to end her WWE career. China would then have a run in New Japan Pro Wrestling before having her final match in TNA all the way does. back in 2011. Oh yeah, she didn't do anything this match in would this. see China team with Kern Angle to take on the team of Jeff and Karen Jarrett. But China's in-ring time was kept rather limited and the match wasn't the best showcase of the former Intercontinental Champion's talent. Number 2, Andre the Giant Andre the Giant's final match Let's for go. the WWE which aired on television took place at WrestleMania 6. This saw him team with Haku as the duo lost their tag titles to Demolition. Andre would actually wrestle again for WWE, appearing at a number of house shows, but the match at WrestleMania 6 is commonly cited as his final WWE match. 
Although this was his final WWE match, Andre would go on to wrestle over a hundred more matches yeah, before his official retirement. Andre's official last match came in All Japan Pro Wrestling, All Japan. where saw he, Baba, and Russia Kimura defeat Hakura Igen, Manusoba Fuchi, and Motoshi Akuma in front of over 16,000 fans. Well, Andre Dragon wasn't capital. even doing well. He was and almost one, Hulk dying. Hogan. As Hulk Hogan is one of the biggest he was on the verge of dying that year too. We expected that Hogan's yeah. farewell match would have been one of the biggest box office attractions in wrestling history. Like that was a couple history. months after he Hogan's died. last WWE oh, match wow. took place at SummerSlam in 2006, and Hogan would face Randy Orton in the lackluster match, which should have seen Hogan put over the young star, but obviously this never happened. Hogan would wrestle several more times over the years, and his final match would actually be at a house show. That's right, one of the biggest wrestling stars that really? makes up a pair of boots has at a house a show. At a house show. In January of 2012, during Hogan's infamous run in TNA, Hogan, Sting, and James Storm defeated Kurt Angle, Bobby Roode, and Bully oh, Ray in Hulk Hogan in TNA in front of around 5,000 fans. Yeah, it was rumored that Hogan was going to come out of retirement to appear in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 36, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic taking over the world, these plans were cancelled, and Hogan remained retired. But there you have it folks, 10 forgotten last matches of WWE Legends. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content. Yeah, like the Andre the Giant one, like, you can see in all Japan that the dude was not doing well because his health was, like, deteriorating a lot. Yeah, you can honestly tell because yeah. he was kind of slow. Yeah, he was really slowish and sluggish, and his health was just not good. And, like, a couple months later is when he officially died. Yeah. But what you think, though, of this yeah. whole video? It was a nice history lesson, you know? Yeah, it was. It was yeah. definitely nice. But, you know, it, it, it's nice to learn more about these characters, you know, wrestlers. It, I'm not too big on wrestling, but it was just nice to know their last match, you know? Yes. Just to see how, you know, how the legends moved on and some passed away, you know, rest their soul. The one that surprised me the most was Ultimate Warrior because he took on Orlando Jordan. Because Ultimate Warrior, he's not into gay people. He bashes gay people a lot. And Orlando Jordan is a bisexual in real life. <laughs> so I don't know how that worked out. Yo, <laughs> Ultimate Warrior is, is the G, but he's out of pocket. Yeah, he, was, he, yeah. was a, he was an extreme homophobe. He went to, in his like, when he did his, uh, talk seminars in colleges, he would say the infamous words, querying does not make the world work. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. So, like I said, I don't know how the hell he got into a match with Orlando Jordan if he's a homophobe. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. But, but anyways, that's enough history for today. Yep. Please like, share, and subscribe. And Dion, what do you have to say? Bye.